In this episode, we're gonna be looking at tessafensine, how you should be taking it, what the proper dosage is, what time you should take it, but also something that's very important, there is a couple of groups of people who should be avoiding tessafensine. So make sure to listen up, take note, and by the end of this episode, the goal is that you know whether or not tessafensine is gonna be the right choice for you and your goals. Now let's get in the show. Welcome to the Man Lab, where we combine science and health in the pursuit of making men great again. This is how legends are. So Jeff, what is tessofensine and how does it work in the body? Tessofensine was brought to the market. It was actually being looked at in early 2000s as a treatment or a potential treatment for you know, appetite suppression. And it's kind of evolved now and they're looking at it for obesity and even ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity. That's an interesting thing. So it was originally brought in for depression, you said, and now no, it's transitioning across? No, it was across? more for appetite control. Um, I think there were some studies that never really got past phase two that were looking at more for Alzheimer's, but it sucked. You know, a lot of these medications they bring or peptides even, mm. you know, they come to the market for one thing and they suck at one thing, but through that they find that it, oh, it helps A, B, and C, or it helps appetite, or it's gonna help, you know, hunger control and metabolism or whatever. So it was more looked at for just appetite control. And now they're looking more for like obesity control and then to help or as an option for like Adderall or Vyvanse, which are ADHD medications. And so um, for appetite suppression, the big two, semaglutide and tisepatide, what is the thing that differentiates tesofensine from those two? Yeah, so basically tesofensine is a monoamine reuptake inhibitor. What does that mean? Uh, it's classed as a SNDRI, not to be confused with an SSRI, which a lot of people use for depression. Um, just so you know, SSRIs, if you don't know what it stands for, it's a selective or serotonin selective reuptake inhibitor. Helps improve that, that neurotransmitter. This one actually helps with serotonin nor epinephrine or nor adrenaline, which is kind of our flight or flight response, and then dopamine. So it's three main core neurotransmitters in our brain. It, it helps increase the levels of them. Who is the right candidate for this medication? I mean, the average person that doesn't have an issue with certain neurotransmission in the brain um, could benefit from it. So, you know, by, by re -up, like preventing the reuptake of those certain neurotransmitters, and let's just talk like individually on each one. So serotonin, you know, a lot of people, if you're depressed or the levels are low, by increasing your serotonin, your mood gets better, your outlook on life gets better. Uh, and s with that, obviously, there is some appetite suppression. Uh, when you get into dopamine, that's kind of our, I would say, the feel good, get shit done, motivated hormone. Uh, it, you know, that's the part of our brain that we get reward or pleasure and just, you know, kind of motivation from. And then you have norepinephrine or noradrenaline. That's kind of our flight or flight response hormone or not hormone, but neurotransmitter that is kind of prepares us for certain situations or say we're about to get in a fight, you know, to help increase heart rate, kind of prepare our body to react. Find out if you may have low testosterone with the Adam test. This is a free questionnaire that's online, takes about 60 to 90 seconds to fill out, and it has up to an 88% accuracy rating of the indication if you may have low testosterone. Now, a lot of people like to do this because they're not sure if they wanna take the first step of getting the blood test just yet, but this is a nice introduction, free method to find out if that first step is gonna be necessary. To make use of this, all you gotta do is head to bit.ly forward slash free Adam test. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash free Adam test. And if you don't wanna remember that, the link is in the description of wherever you're watching or viewing this podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Is this becoming like a, an alternative to SSRIs or is it? So that's kind of cool that you say that because, you know, there's so many issues going with just serotonin and, you know, they work maybe in, you know, 20, 30, 40%, but a lot of times people have issues with them um, when you overstimulate or get too much serotonin in the body, or if you do, you know, with somebody who has bipolar schizophrenia, it could create that situation to become worse for them. Whereas, you know, with this, you're, you're kind of helping the body keep the natural levels up. So you're not going to have too much of it. Uh, so, you, you know, there's, there's much less risk, much less side effects versus an SSRI. Now you, it's not classed for that. It's going to, you know, it's more classed to, to really help with appetite control and mood and just hunger cravings. Interesting. So, so what's the, the benefits of this for the, um, like we're using it with appetite control and suppression. 
what would be the benefit of using tessafensine for that if that's your outcome? Is it to do with the fact that it could elevate your mood, help that, maybe uh, help with the product or your day to day living as well? Like, yeah. what's the what would what would drag someone to tessafensine? So, I mean, with with serotonin, um, you know, you're going to control more like your appetite and more your satiation, like after after you eaten something versus wanting to kind of eat more. Um, you know, a lot of times when people have low serotonin and they're de- they're de- excuse me they're depressed, mm-hmm. um, they tend to obviously eat an ice eat. cream in front of yeah, television. Yeah, they, you know, and then when you get into dopamine, you know, you feel better and you get that you know, motivation reward center of the brain. So you're kind of satisfied with what you have. It mm. takes away. So the dopamine is kind of where you don't really crave crap. And then the norepinephrine or noradrenaline side of things, you know, there's medications when you look at like, you know, cause we're in the world of weight loss. If you look at like phenamine, that's actually a, a sympathomimetic, but it's, it stimulates our CNS or central nervous system, which kind of increases our heart rate, just like, you know, I was talking about your flight or flight response. Yep. And by doing that, a lot of times it'll decrease your appetite. So your cravings for things go down. Um, but with that comes, you know, increased heart rate, increased potential for blood pressure. So you don't want to overstimulate, uh, you know, norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Hey, interesting. Do you find that people when they have tesafensine, become more motivated to go to the gym and do more physical activity as well? So I've been on it for a while. I've played quite a bit with it and have a lot of clients that have used it. Uh, You know, I think the biggest thing, because if you had to go from the top down, I think you get a lot more, I would say it's more pronounced in the dopamine area. And that's where you kind of, you're just motivated, you're focused. You know, that's part of like Adderall. If you look at Adderall, Adderall is a CNS stimulant that actually stimulates more so dopamine and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. So a lot of times you'll end up more focused, more energy. So you're, you're just more motivated to do stuff. Like I notice a big difference in, in, you know, just how I function through my day. Uh, I just, I'm able to kind of stay on task and get, get a lot more done. The question I've got is uh, dosage and protocol. What's the recommended uh, time of day to take this and what, is the recommended dosage that you find for people is useful? Um, just a normal person, not on any medications prior to going to. And then I always say, obviously, health history. You know, that's something you should, you should take into account. Obviously, females, like um, breastfeeding or, or pregnant, that's a no. That's all medication. You yeah. should never, yeah. unless you want to potentially mess up your kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to- it Comes uh, out fully focused. Like if you have a <laughs> severe cardiovascular history, uncontrolled hy- hypertension or blood pressure, um, I would probably be very cautious. And so that somebody like that would start at a much lower dose. Uh, but the average person would probably start on a 250 um, microgram or a 500 microgram per day. Most people out there, I think, who've used it, uh, use the 500 microgram ones, but or first thing in the morning, see how you respond. There is, you know, and I've seen it firsthand too, is, you know, if you tend to take it too late in the day, it's not like a stimulant to where you took like caffeine or you took like, you know, an amphetamine derivative like Adderall, but it does make it hard for some people to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So it could start affecting your sleep if you take it later in the day. So first thing in the morning, see how you respond to it and then adjust it accordingly. It's, you know, with medications and peptides, it's never perfect science, especially with a lot of this stuff coming to the market. So, you know, we, we work hard to really try to kind of be able to cater to the masses and, and then adjust it to the person so it's specific so you could get all the good and none of the bad. Some people have been commenting on our episodes asking where they can get certain peptides and testosterone from that they can trust that is high quality. T Clinics USA is the place you can do that. So Alex and Jeff, the guys that are always on these podcasts with me, are owners of T Clinics USA, the people who produce Man Lab podcast. Now these peptides include BPC, CJC 1295, Ipamorelin, Abutamorin, to Tezepatide, Semaglutide, even testosterone boosting therapies and testosterone replacement therapy. So if you want to get high quality products as well as a discount for your first package, T Clinics USA does offer 10% off to all Man Lab listeners. All you've got to do is head to tclinicsusa.com, mention the Man Lab for 10% off your first package. So just to clarify again, whatever product they are talking about in whatever episode you're currently watching, you can get it from T Clinics USA and get 10% off. So tclinicsusa.com, mention the Man Lab, 10% off, and let's help making men great again. Let's get back in the show. You sparked my curiosity because I know with like coffee, caffeine, it's got five hours. So you try and avoid it within uh, five hours of going to bed. And you've mentioned that 
if you take it late in the afternoon, you know, you're going to have trouble going to sleep. Is there a way in which we can figure out how yeah, I mean, early we should take it? Obviously, I th I think when you look at a lot of um, like the reports, obviously half life in the system. I think more active for probably twelve to probably fourteen hours. Mm -hmm. So that's why you'd probably want to take it first, first thing, thing in the morning, morning. <laughs> yeah. and hopefully it wears off by nighttime. Um, you know, I've been kind of adjusting and doing it twice a day, um, and that's typically why we push to get a lower dose. So you could kind of keep things active and stay focused through your entire day. Or, hey, you, you wake up in the morning, things are good to go. Once you know it doesn't affect your sleep, you could potentially take it like midday and kind of plow through the second half of the day. Gotcha. So could you also, is tessafensine able to be taken with semaglutide and tizepatide? Yeah, they're completely different. And honestly, it's a great combination. It's just, you know, if anything, it would allow you to have a little bit more appetite control mm -hmm. and hopefully decrease maybe some of the other GLP you need to take, which, you know, a lot of times with the GLP, semaglutide, terzepatide, if you take too much, you tend to have some side effects or gastrointestinal issues. Sometimes you feel constipated or you might get nauseous. You could almost like cut back on one, add this in and you kind of get a win-win because this is going to help with more, you know, that motivation and reward and focus and, and appetite control. And then you also have this other thing that's kind of just wiping out cravings more so because it's, it's more focused on controlling the GLP. You've mentioned with, with women that are pregnant or breastfeeding, avoid tessafensine. What about women that are not doing? No issues. Those? No. If they're, if they're, you know, like healthy in general, no issues. It, guy or girl doesn't matter. You're just improving the neurotrism the neurotransmission in the brain. I cannot talk to it. <laughs> How is tessafensine taken? Is it injectable or pill form? It's a pill form. Uh, you could pill or capsule. Uh, obviously, the pharmacies that we use are usually capsules. Perfect. And with capsules, there's usually a concern about uh, liver toxicity. Does it have anything that's proving that or mm -hmm. proving against it? Nothing. Um, yeah, it's not, there's no hepatoxicity or any stress to the kidneys uh, with any type of, or this oral medication or version. Hey guys, just quickly, if you're enjoying this podcast and you're part of the 84% of people who are not currently subscribed, please subscribe right now by hitting that button so that you can get notified every time an episode comes out. Now our goal is always to, for you to find out different ways to improve your health, maybe improve your wealth, or just improve your mentality so that you can improve the other two. So if you are part of that and you are getting a lot of value from this, please hit that subscribe button so you can get more of it. Now let's get back to the show. Who should be avoiding tessafensine? Um, we'll just go back to that. So cardiac issues, uncontrolled, like high blood pressure, um, obviously severe cardiovascular disease. You know, if you had some stents, you shouldn't play around with anything that's going to change your heart rate or blood pressure. Uh, I would say that's one of the major ones. Anyone who's on already SSRIs to mix the two, if you're already taking something that's trying to kind of increase the serotonin, you're going to also put it on top of that and increase it more. Um, anyone who's had or been diagnosed with uh, bipolar or schizophrenia, it's probably not a good combination for sure. Really? What's the reason for that? Um, so th per those situations, even with SSRIs, a lot of times they won't give, uh, you know, those patients those medications because it could make the situation worse. Long-term use of this, is there any start, any information that you've seen or is this still relatively too new to know? Is there any knowledge of... Uh, Long-term use it's of It's not too new, but I'll tell you, you know, there is some worry, I guess, with some people if if they have, you know, addictive personality, especially with, you know, people that are, tend to have dopamine issues uh, and they see an increase in that, they typically could eventually have, kind of get addiction towards it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it's, it's not been reported. Um, I don't see it happening. Yeah. So if someone is taking Adderall, can they take tessafensine? So so there's, you know, obviously Adderall or even somebody on Phenermine would want to be a little bit cautious because you're already kind of increasing those levels of norepinephrine in the body, which could, if you take this on top of that, if you increase, you know, norepinephrine, you could actually increase your heart rate, your blood pressure, and then too much stimulation to the CNS or nervous system, you tend to get anxiety. Uh, you might have some heart palpitations. You know, anybody that's on, say, like an Adderall type medication should be very cautious. And, you know, we, we're starting to try to get some formulations that are much lower than what most people are using to be able to kind of work with both. So you're still getting the benefit from it. People that are trying to lose weight right now with semaglutide, tizepatide, is tessafensine an alternative for it where it's like I could have 
this instead of it? And if so, what are the benefits that tessafensine may have over semaglutide and tezabatide? You want to talk specifically for like the GLPs. One, you get a lot of people that can't really tolerate those medications. They feel nauseous, they feel sick, and they don't want to eat at all. Whereas tessafensine is not working in the same pathway. So you, you once again, you have this to where you don't really crave certain things, which you get that with GLPs. You, it gets to the point where you're good with the food that you do eat, which you kind of get that satiation feeling, but that's more because things moving slow through your gut with the GLPs or semaglutide or trisepatide. But you don't get any of the increase in metabolic rate, whereas like stimulating the neurotransmitter norepinephrine and noradrenaline, you can increase your heart rate, vasoconstriction. And so metabolically, you burn more calories. Mm. Obviously, you know, wherever your food's at, caloric deficit, every 3,500 we deficit, we got a pound. What type of person would just use that um, and not stack it with semaglutide? I would say someone who, you know, I, where I see, I think it applying in the world that we're in, especially when it comes to weight loss or weight management, is you have some people that just don't tolerate amphetamine derivatives like, you know, ventramine um, mm. because they just don't feel good or the heart rate goes up. This is not going to stimulate as much. So they, it would have much less side effects for it and less potential for addiction because, you know, a lot of people crave that amphetamine derivative. It, it's not amphetamine. Yeah. So you're you're just picking up norepinephrine. So they, they kind of get the same effect with less, I guess, side effects from increasing that. Uh, so it's a good alternative for someone who maybe can't go on phenamine, somebody cardio cardiovascularly that shouldn't go on it. Now you have this kind of like in-betweener that can help and you're going to kind of get a threefold benefit out of it. And where else do you see tesafensine being a benefit for people? I think there's some potential. And like I said, they're now just starting to look at it for ADHD rather than get you know people on Adderall or Vyvanse, which tend to create bigger problems. People have to take more. And then when they come off, a lot of times their levels are rocked when it comes to like serotonin and dopamine. Uh, you could actually get somebody on this, have the same effect, keep them focused, um, still control their appetite. And, and it's going to come with far less side effects. So it's a good transition, once again, between an amphetamine appetite suppressant, much safer. Uh, amphetamine or CNS stimulant type Adderall Vyvanse, much safer. All right, thanks guys. So that was a nice short one on tesafensine. If you wanted to find out more about tesafensine, if it is the right thing for you and your journey, you can hit up T-Clinics USA at bit.ly forward slash T-Clinics USA. Links in the description. Mention the Man Lab, 10% off. And also, if you wanted to find out if you may or may not have low testosterone, you can go and do bit.ly forward slash free atom test. That is in the description as well. A couple of quick questions and it will give you an indication whether your testosterone is probably a little low. Make sure to subscribe for more information and we'll see you next episode. <laughs>